I'm, I'm happy to be here. Man. Long overdue. Very long overdue. Long overdue. Very Everybody's long. been, wa- they've wanted it. They in my mentions all the time. I'm like, yo, when you going up to, <laughs> no. you know, the pod. I'm like. It, it's funny too, because people like, they'll always be like, why you ain't done one with Julito? Like, mm-hmm. it, it, they kind of like, like I'm, yeah. like, like we don't run. Like, we like, don't run. Yeah, like, like, bro, no. you don't understand. We've been working on it for quite some time. Quite some time. Probably like, yeah. I feel like we talked about it maybe when you, after you drop your first episode. Right. Yeah. Yes. Well, like once I knew I was doing this, I was like, oh, wait, like we got to, wait, we got to do one, yeah. to, you know, together. I'm mean, yeah. still, still trying to set up the, you know, the, uh, the good old Rat Pack, the, the, four, Rat Pack. the four of us. B2K. B2K. Of, the B2K <laughs> of acting. <laughs> but, but, you uh, know, Marion's hard to get in contact with these days. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, um, it's not how it's supposed to be. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just bump on from that. <laughs> bump, bump, bump. bump, bump. bump. <laughs> but we here, bro. We Long here. overdue. So what's, bro, so, you know, I, you know what I've been up to, been doing the podcast. But yeah. What have you been, I, I know you're always fucking yelling at the New York Knicks. Yeah. This is, yeah. I, this I know for yeah. a fact. Yeah. I know you're also producing your own films, yes. making your yes. own projects. Yes. But first we're going to go into what you're up to now what's okay. going on what you excited about yeah everything bro everything um i think i'm at a place in my life stro where it's just like i'm just content to where i am right now just in life like you know there's those moments where we feel like we're like oh i gotta get i have to have i got i'm not there no more bro i think yeah. you know i'm i'm my 20 year mark in this industry now and now i'm just like confident that what's for me is for me i'm i'm confident that you know, I know the things that need to work and need to sh- change in order for me to be where I need to be. And right, I'm just right. slowly but surely get into that space. Um, like like you said, producing a lot. I started writing. And I think that's the dope part of, like, I think we were talking about it, the struggle. The mm-hmm. struggle of this industry sometimes, it'll create, it'll show you some other shit you're good at. Right. And I was like, oh, you know what? Ain't nobody giving me a job. Let me go write. And then I realized, oh, I'm a good ass writer. You know right. what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. okay, I got a bunch of friends. We got cameras. We got, let me start producing some shit. Hundred percent. Things have been coming out great. So I'm just excited for what's next. I'm 33. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I'm my Jesus year now. Like <laughs> so, I'm like excited just for where I am currently and where the, what's to come. But mad shit popping right now, bro. I got. Uh, I just we just dropped this uh, TV series. Season three of Terra Lake Drive on okay. the channel All Black. That's um AMC streaming service. That season went great. People fucked with it. Shout out uh Jerry Lamoff, Boogie, shout out my guys over there. Um, Errol, uh out here in LA. But so Terra Lake Drive, great. Story Ave, that's the film, uh indie joint with uh Luis Guzman and Sante Black. Oh, yeah, right. Alex Heber yeah. and uh, Melvin Gregg. They're oh. in that joint. That was that did well. Um, damn, what else? Smash it. The music. You know, I dropped my album. Legendary is the option. Right. That's out. Uh, working on new music. Right. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh <laughs> you yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some on the way. Some people. on the way. Uh, on the way. We're gonna chill on that until it's ready. <laughs> um, just been, just been, just grateful, bro. Man, no, I, bro, and you're so right. Like, mm. it, I think sometimes we have to have, we have to have the struggles just so we can learn, like, so we can expand. Absolutely. Cause we, you know, once, if things are just free flowing, then you're like, all right, you'll, like, there's so many things we'll just never tap into. Absolutely. Never. And, Absolutely. and, and it's cool to see, like, literally each of us has, has found other avenues and other yeah. outlets and was like, nah, nah, like, this is cool, this but I'm gonna do, do this, this as well. I'm a, I'm a, I, I think, for us four to start, I mean, you always was kind of mostly faceted, but for us, for the other three, I, I think we found a groove with what like doing other shit. Right. 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 And I think it took time, but now we're all kind of with Tris doing the music, with, with Maine do, writing and, he, right. you know, waiting on his project to get greenlit. Like, 
we're all in like little pockets that's like solid but it took time to truly get there right and now we there and uh and you've been doing this shit since i mean we, I look at just the memorabilia around here. you got this album you know what i'm saying be a dreamer like, album be a dreamer uh, so yeah um I, I think we all in like a good pocket right now nah hell fire. yeah man yeah it's, it's great to see the growth man yeah yeah. It, it's, it's funny it's been a long time it's, it, and it's been a long time we were we were talking about that the last time we were all in a room together was what the, the premiere of the wire no probably mm, yeah maybe was it the premiere that was the last time yeah no it, when when it's always wait, wait. Three, it's always in groups of threes it is groups of threes it's always in groups of threes right. it's never been all four of us in one room together Outside of the Zoom, I did in the during quarantine, and and that was virtual. So <laughs> think about it. When have we all been in a room together? That is wild. Yeah, I wasn't at Just Sixteen. I think Main and Trish was there. Yeah. Um, what uh, are the other opportunities? Uh, Tristan's birthday party. Tristan's birthday party. You and Main were there. Yeah. And that was year, year, years. Years. That ago. was years ago. Outside of that. Me, you, and Tris were together when I lived out here in 2018. Right. Yeah. Me, and you, and Maine. Maine. Yeah. Uh, me and Maine. Like, it's, it's <laughs> not been, we've not all been, people have not seen the Corner Boys, all four of us, together. If you catch, since, if you catch one, you, you, the odds of catching the other, other yo. Is crazy. Yo. <laughs> the odds of us. <laughs> Could you like you know how wild that would be? Like if just like the one day we go do something, it just goes horribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like we all just like, you know what, man? Niggas need to talk, bro. Yeah. We need to, you know, just really pow out, hang out. Nigga, let's just let's just take a quick trip to Mexico. It'll yeah. be cool. Nigga. It, Four it, it, wire stars <laughs> die. <laughs> you mad, you, you mad dark, my nigga. What did you, I didn't know you were gonna go there. It's like they all die. And they I mean, the fact that we ne we not anywhere yeah, together. Very, that is very, very odd. Is odd, and people are always surprised when I say it. They're always like, "Wait, you y'all haven't been?" No. Well, I guess because it's like you was in New York, uh, but then when you came out here, we kicked yep, it. Yep. Yep. And yep. then. Yep. Yeah, and then Tr Trish was in New York, then out here. Yeah. And then Jermaine, he moved out here. That's when me and Jermaine yep. started kicking in more. Yep. yep. But yeah. I don't know. It's I, I literally have, uh, what's, what did I name our uh, our group chat? <laughs> it's, it's called. <laughs> what is it called? Uh, <laughs> four Niggas Who Never Talk, even though they did something legendary. <laughs> did something legendary. <laughs> That is hilarious. I, I want to get it completely right. It, yeah, four niggas who did something legendary, <laughs> legendary yet never speak. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to know we have a group chat, y'all. Yeah. So we've talked. Um, <laughs> we've they, talked. We've had plans for different things. We sound like politicians. I know, we do. <laughs> we do. We've spoken. We, you uh, know what, what it reminds me of? Uh, the Last Dance documentary. The like last. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like and little glimpses of it like where they did like they six championships and niggas don't never speak you know they like you don't never see Michael Scotty hell no freaking Luke Longley and you don't Harper see them, Harper you don't <laughs> Steve Kerr you don't see them in a room together Jordan don't fuck with none of them. <laughs> Jordan fuck with Charles Oakley. Oakley. That's yeah, his man. Other than Charles that, Oakley. everybody else, yeah. meh. Yeah. So I don't know. But you know, uh, not to dive into nothing too serious, but like it's it was funny because I didn't know when we were even talking about when we were walking the other day, we you had just got in, and we were talking about when you had came out here mm -hmm. and you were you told me just like how well, it sounds better, so I don't sound like I'm big of myself. No, 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 no. But no, you had told me, you were like, yeah, bro. No, like, I'll say it. It had you, gotten dark out here, but. If it wasn't for Maestro, if it wasn't for you and our relationship and us hanging when I moved to LA in 2018, I only lived here in nine months. But when I, if it wasn't for you and our relationship, I would have left maybe like two, three months. Ago. Which is crazy. Because, yeah. you know, like I didn't, I I didn't notice that, you yeah, know, because yeah. it's because it's always a good vibe we're, when we're together. Yeah, yeah, and we're men, and we don't really speak about right. get too deep into f emotions. And also, I think we talked about this too, like where I was processing it right. while I'm in it. It was mm -hmm. my first time, I uh, like living on a different coast, 
uh, I have children, first time, like, fully being away from them. Like, I live in Jersey, they live in New York, but it's the first time where it was like, I can't just, like, go drive an hour to see them. I can't just, right. you know what I'm saying? And then they're, talk, they're calling me every day, we're talking, and it's just, I felt like I was in a completely different world. And um, it was the first time I felt, like, alone in my life. Mm. And I had realized up until that point that, I had never felt a part of anything, right? Growing up, I always was like a kid who had mad friends in school. Right. I had mad brothers and sisters. I lived in a project, very small community, mm. mad people. You just always feel connected. Then in, once you start going to school, I'm popular. Because, you know, before the, even the acting, I, I got long hair and girls like me, so I'm right. naturally popular. And I'm a cool dude. But then I become an actor. Now everybody even more so wants to be friends. So it... Then I, I just have mad community in New York where whether it's my momentum education family, whether it's my just friends, I just always was connected to something. Right. And then I came to LA and I was like, damn. I, like I, you were doing, I think you were doing your best integrating, supporting me and yeah. integrating out here and introducing me to hella people. With, but I always felt like on the outside. I and there's nothing you did or nothing anybody did. Yeah. It's just natural. I didn't. I wasn't here long enough to, yeah. to be a part. But and it's also like we identify too. And it's how the people in the city move. Yes, because naturally, they, yeah. like we were saying, we were like, yeah, like I'm. We're the type of people we don't. If we want to kick it, we don't have to go spend money to go kick it. Yes, that is not exactly. Or we don't have to be in a scene like. I'm not hitting you up because I'm like, oh, well, I, he's gonna know where the party's at, and I need to get in, and vice versa. Exactly. Like, nah, I'm, if we're gonna yeah, hang yeah, out, bro, I'm yeah. gonna pull up on you. All right, cool. We play Man. 2K, we smoke some, yeah. we gonna chill and vibe. Out here, it's like it seems it's like, yo, what, 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 what all right, you want to get up? All right, what's, uh, what event is happening? Where can we be seen? Where can we go? <laughs> and I was like, and then I think I told you, I'm like, naturally, I'm not even a dude who wants to hang out. Like, yeah. I'm not going on my way to hang out with men often unless <laughs> you're, like, my really good friend. Or unless we got some business <laughs> and, to and do. We get, right. Yeah, like, like, why am I calling you, like, Stro? Like, like you I'll do that with because we have 20-year history. Right. Exactly. And I've, but most people I don't have that with. <laughs> and most people are a bit awkward. So I'm just not naturally doing none of that. Right. So I get here, and I just, I feel like kind of a part and it was yeah. my first time I felt like I didn't belong yeah and I, I also feel like New York is such a communal city mm. in general yeah. so it's you coming out here if you don't come with you know what family. I mean family or really have some really guy. close friends yeah I didn't come with outside of you like I knew a few people here and there but most of them were like industry folks so right. we didn't have like a real connection relationship, yeah. relationship. Um, knew maybe one or two other people but it, yeah if it wasn't for you bro I would've been out been out right, let me get, tell you a story I've never told anybody this ever in my life the day I decided to leave LA I went to go see this movie by myself on Sunset, uh, this film by Jonah Hill, his directorial debut, mid 90s. Right? I went to go see that film because I saw the trailer and I was like, yo, this is like crazy. And I'm in a theater by myself. I never in my life, up until this point and prior to that, went to the movies by myself. So I'm in the theater, Stro, and I'm watching this movie. And the story is about this kid in the 90s who doesn't feel like he belongs doesn't feel apart, and he goes and he meets these skaters. And he, like, admires them, and they just bring him along. And they're like, all right, you one of us. And the film is, like, just a coming-of-age story of this kid trying to find his way. And he finds, like, at home is kind of crazy for him. His brother hates him. His mother's on alcoholic or something like that. And he just hangs out with these skaters, and he finds a place. Uh -huh. And in that moment, I, I'll never forget, bro, I walked out that theater, and I was crying. And I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go home. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. It was that movie, bro. I walked out of the theater and booked my flight back to New York. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. What, what What do you think about the film? Just resonated. With it you? was uh this. It was about. I felt like it was. I was watching my life at that point in this film. And this mm. kid, he felt so alone, and he needed to feel apart. And when these people brought him along their 
journey along like they brought him in he finally felt the part and i knew i in la i was feeling like the lost kid new york and what i was creating there prior to coming here was the skaters finding helping me find a home i i get it and i was i i didn't have that and i know i needed to go and get that Right. You know what I'm saying? I needed to go back. Um, And my kid, like, it was all of it, bro. But I don't know. It was just that film, bro. That film. And the film is not like this crazy, dramatic. It's it's really like you watch watch the summer with these kids. Right. And maybe also. But you see the pair. I know what you mean. And you watch. I noticed even when we were talking about shows and whatnot mm-hmm. like you really do watch it with a producer writer uh, yeah, right like yeah. i see it like yeah. you really do so i could see how you could because i do that all the time i'll find parallels and something yeah. and i'll apply it to myself and i'm like damn yeah. like that i i honestly feel like great good great television and films uh are fantastic blueprints yeah. that you can oh, look absolutely. at for for uh, caricatures, for the way, for the way people think, move, uh, yeah. situations in life, you Absolutely. know, a lot of things, and you know, obviously they're a bit, you know, yeah. intensified and they're yeah. a bit exploited, but dramatized. dramatized, yeah, thank yeah. you. But when you match yourself up, like sometimes just watch a movie and say, which guy am I? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, sometimes I won't lie. Sometimes you'll watch it and you won't like the guy. You'll be the villain. Yeah. You'll be yeah. You'll or be even villain. worse, you won't even be the villain. You'll be the guy next to the villain. And I know a lot of people who would apply to that. And you're like, you'll oh, be, you're that guy? Yeah, you'll be the guy making the villain the villain. You Peter Pettigrew. Ooh, that's Ugh, deep. Like somebody is. Ooh, that's deep. Yeah. yeah. You're not even Voldemort, my yeah, guy. I'm about to use a Harry Potter analogy yeah. too. <laughs> Like, you're not even Snape, bro. You, yeah, you're not even Snape. You, you're the, the other teacher. I forget his name, bro. You're not even Draco. You're not Draco, bro. You're not Draco, bro. Who are you, fam? Uh, you the flunky next to it. Next to it. That's real talk. Yeah, there's people yeah. who do this. Yeah, bro. That's and, real talk. And it's... it's what's, what's fatherhood like, man? What is it not like, bro? It's, you know, I've, I've, I have kids that are now legit teenagers. That's the so, crazy, bro. That's the craziest thing. I remember you posted some yeah. picture Me and my with daughter. your daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, wait. Yeah. Ha- my daughter's the same age now that I was on the wire when we shot. Wow. Okay. So she, wow. Yeah. So my daughter's fit. My oldest daughter's 15. Then my, my middle kid, uh, she just turned 13. So she, two teens. And then I got a seven year old. How old were you when you had your first one? I was 18. Oh, okay. 18, okay. 18, yeah. So my daughter's born, actually, I was 17. She's born October 17th. My birthday is December 16th. So I was 17, and then two months later, I turned 18. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so watch, looking at her now, and then realizing that she's the same age when we did The Wire is, is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, right. Yeah, and fatherhood... It's 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 everything, bro. It's ro- it's a roller coaster. You're like, mm-hmm. you think you're doing amazing, and then you have the moments where you're like, think you're failing at everything, and you're the worst dad. And <laughs> right, I've had my struggles because me and their moms are, haven't been together pr- right. pretty much since they've been born. So that being a, a father that's not in the same home, so now growing, mm-hmm. they're growing up, and I'm, a, you know, I'm not in their home. So it's but so much I can. I'm doing my best, right. but sometimes your best is not enough. So just it's it's been rocky, man. It's been rocky, but it's been the best roller coaster I've ever been on, bro. I'm not gonna hold you. Like it's been yeah. because when I have three daughters who are kind, they're loving, right. they care about <laughs> humanity, about people. Like I'll like we'll be together walking down the street and just naturally because I'm a hood stupid dude out. <laughs> I had to take a stro- uh, rap off a straw and throw it on the street, and they're like, "Dad, pick that up," and I'm like, "Word, that's like that's what you needed." That's what that's the kids that me and their moms raised, and that's right. like you know what I'm saying. The I just now because they're teenagers, my two oldest are teenagers. I'm watching them with their friends, and then like we're driving in a car the other day, and they're in the back seat, and I'm not really eavesdropping, but I, yeah, I am yeah, because <laughs> and I it, when you see your kids hang out with their friends, you see what kind of kid you have. Mm, facts. And I'm like, oh, 
I did a my, their mothers and I did a great job at raising them because they're not like doing too much. Mm-hmm. They're they're the leaders of their groups, but they're not like a whack leader. They're where not they're, disrespecting. They're not their disrespecting friends. their friends. They're kind to their friends. They only their friends are dope. They still they still act like little girls in a world where these young girls probably are not doing that anymore. Right. They're growing up hella quick, but they're like still. My daughter just. Wants to do TikTok dances and still like you know what I'm saying? They're yeah. like good kids, mm-hmm. and because of that, I'm like, all right. Even within failing at times, I feel or not being the best, so they 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 came out great. And I, amazing, and and, and as long as I see that, then I'm like, everything else will work itself out. That's amazing, yeah. bro. I mean, it's it's funny too because I know it, like you said, just with even just the rapper thing like mm-hmm. it teaches you so, having three girls probably teaches you just so much like even sure. probably teaches you things about just understanding women that just, oh absolutely yeah bro it because i'm i'm terrible at i won't even lie like nah, I'm, like tough. the psychology the of psychology that psychology of women are it's next level and it's it's interesting because I didn't grow up with a like outside of girlfriends I didn't grow up with a lot of women right and then I was left I I was on my own from like sixteen so I didn't really grow up a lot with my mom right but now I have to learn the psychology of women because I have three girls right and I'm like and your mom was tough too. and my mom was tough Real, right yeah. very different but my kids are different from her right. they were raised different from yeah. me so they're just di- it's like you have to, and there's no how-to manual right. to do any of this. Yeah, you go and, as you go, as you go, and they're like, "All right, here, uh, be try a dad, this. try <laughs> this." And and I've also grown up seeing horrible examples of fatherhood, mm-hmm. right? So, right, it's 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 different, man. It's it's different, but it's it's fulfilling. It's, it's dope because you get to also put get to put your spin on it. Yeah. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, you can look yeah. at all this shit and be like, okay, right, I know I didn't like this, 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 and this. Yeah. I know I want I want to try to be this. Yeah. You know? It's, absolutely. But I, I much respect, because I'm... Thank you, bro. I'm, I Thank am, you, bro. I'm it's, far from Listen, from trust that. me, bro. Take your time. <laughs> Take your time, young man. Because, <laughs> bro... And, and I think you'll be a great dad, honestly, because you, you... You understand the world in a way that a lot of men don't. And because and that's what you need as a parent. You need to not just be in your world. You need to understand worlds. Yeah, I, and I yeah. And you understand what I'm saying? Because of that, I think I think it'd be great. Thanks. Man. Yeah, so it's time, man. We, hey. <laughs> hey you just talking time to go. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm, I'm gonna sit tight a little bit, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. We get to a thousand episodes. We'll see what happens. <laughs> hey, keep it, like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll Should I have away. a baby? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Give away a, a thousand subscribers. <laughs> That's that'll be hilarious. Yo, that Yo, would be wild. C O E content over everything. Content over everything. Yo, low key though. What? If I did have a kid. Oh, we're going up with the content. Uh, oh, oh, what? Yo, that's the part is so weird. My kids don't want to do nothing, no acting, no anything. Oh, wait, see, no, no, see, no, see. You, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, you know, you know. Be a dreamer, nigga. Be I'm, a dreamer. I'm, listen, I'm go, from the baby to the, I can already see the clickbait now. Me, ch- <laughs> me changing her for the first time. Son, <laughs> like, I can see yo, it. I can see it. I can see it. I would go crazy. My kids are shy, bro. They're like, they're like, my oldest daughter is uh-huh. like, she's chill, say like seven words to you. She's like, chill. They're okay. the opposite. Like, my middle kid is probably the closest to me. And she's like the life of the party. But content. but when right. I ask if you want to do it serious, they're always like, no, no. No, <laughs> I just want to do this for fun. Absolutely not. <laughs> and I love that because right. I didn't have a choice. Uh... You know what I'm saying? And I'm all about choice for my kids. Like, mm-hmm. what do you want to do? All right, you want? I'm like that that those dads, bro. Where I'm like, ah, right, you want to stay up all night? Cool. But you got to wake up in the morning. You don't be tired. Right. Tomorrow. So you all just right. you just show them with uh, the, well, the consequences. Yeah. Their actions. Like, I right, you, right, you want to stay? I'm gonna t- tell you turn the TV off. I'm gonna. But once I leave this room and go in my room, if you want to stay up all night, that's on you. But I, cause I didn't have those choices growing up. Right. Like my mom is a hustler from the streets. She saw I was I was just always was those different kids who was like, yo, he 
he got long hair. He he doesn't really look like any other kid in the hood. Right. He's special in we some way. Some with him. Something is different about him. Mm. And so she puts me in dance classes first, and I excel with that quick. And then I'm dancing with Alicia Keys. I'm dancing with this person. And, and then we realize, oh, he's probably a little too big to be a background dancer. We got to figure something out. So I start doing a little bit of music, nothing serious. Then we meet a guy, and he's like, yo, he... He, your son needs to be something else. I got an acting agent. You want to, y'all want to do a meeting? I go to the meeting. A day later, I'm on my first audition where I get nine callbacks, right? And I never <laughs> took an acting class, never did any of that. And it was for the movie, honey. Uh, I talk about this all the time, but ah! Little Romeo, I still hate you. No, I'm playing. Uh, I auditioned for that too. You auditioned for it? Yeah. That's crazy. I was pretty mad at Romeo for quite yeah, some time. I, I was like, man, that would about different. it. At this time, I was a dancer. Already mm. killing it in New York. I was probably the best young dancer in New York. And you had the hair. I had, I, it was perfect. Yeah, I didn't but, look like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but listen, you know, the business trumps it all, right? So, right. But I say that to say I didn't have a choice in any of the matter. It wasn't like, Julito, do you want to be? A, it wasn't like, you know, there's some kids who grow up and they're like, I want to be on TV. I want to be in that movie. Yeah. I was never me. That was never me. So what age did they start you with the dancing? Or did you at uh, tw- 11, 12. Okay, 11, 12. Yeah. So that was that was the first time you were doing stuff. It was like 11, 12? Yeah, 11. 11. So I danced with the Knicks. Okay. I was a Knicks City kid. Then I, well, I did, did a few music videos, background dancing stuff. Did a commercial for MTV, something like that. And then, uh, yo, I did a, I just unlocked memory. I did a commercial for when they were... Jesus Walks first dropped. And they had this commercial for something, but they had us dancing to Jesus Walks. It was like a premiere of the song. What? Yeah, on MTV, Unlike Memory. Maybe you can find it in your gizmos and gadgets. Gizmos and gadgets. But like, but so I was doing a few jobs, but I only danced for like a year or two before acting came about, and then I never danced again. Wow. I went on that first audition because you know back in the day we used to audition like four to five times oh, yeah, a week yeah, yeah, in for person. Sure. It oh, wasn't you were going. Like, you yeah. were going in. Yeah. You didn't have like a time to do anything else. No. And yeah, bro, I did. I I, st- I went on that first audition for Honey, and then bro, I booked maybe two weeks after my very first audition of something. Then I just had no time to f- dance again. It was real like that, bro. So, yeah. and then, so you were doing the, wait, so what, what, you were just, what was your first job? Like My your... first job ever was Hack. It was a TV show on ABC, uh, CBS, one of those. Okay. Well, network television. It was like the Law and Order. Okay. Yeah, yeah. one of those. Uh, you were Andre... interviewed. Yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> right. It was Andre Brower and, um, rest in peace, he just passed away, I believe, last year. Oh, really? And yeah, and um, Chad Coleman. Oh. He played my dad. Hell no. That's yeah. amazing, So when bro. we, by the time I got to the Y, I knew Chad already because we did two episodes of that. So we did one season, then the next season they brought us the same actors back to do, to follow up on our characters. Yeah. That's So fire. we, Chad did, he played my dad on that joint. And so when I saw him on the wire, I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> him, Chad. And he lived in my neighborhood. Oh, shit. So I would see him riding his bike, Chad riding his bike, just randomly, just like, oh, what up, Chad? That's amazing, just, bro. Yeah, so Hack was the first one, and then I d- booked uh, Miracle Boys pilot, yeah. the pilot of Miracle Boys first, and then they uh, did that thing where they don't shoot it for a year, <laughs> and then said, oh, we sold it now, and but you got to all re-audition. <laughs> they made us re-audition after we shot the pilot, because they were like, yeah, now it's going to not Now a new network, they want to- New wanna... network, yeah, all right. Yeah, we and then but we all got me, Sean, and Pooch. We all then still got casted again. Uh, because yeah, we wasn't losing that job. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. I mean, to be able to work, I mean, that's something I still I think I did a Nike commercial once mm-hmm. with, uh, but it was a Spike Lee Nike commercial. Yep. But I think that's the only thing I've ever done with Spike. But it, mm. it wasn't like it was quick. Yeah, the commercials. Were I, quick. No yeah. one knew Maestro was there. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it was got uh, it, got you it. shooting. It's a thing. You know? Yeah. But um, yeah. but yeah, man. Like that's that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Me like, and Spike. Are, I mean, I would say he's the the person who launched my career. I guess because right. Miracle Boys first, 
Then we did the Jordan commercial for the 20th anniversary. That's fire. Then we did, uh, what did we do after that? We did we did a pilot for uh, HBO. We, that's it. We, we oh, wait, it. wait, wait, wait. The Brick, right? The Brick. So I was the number two lead of that show. Uh, and you know, it's hilarious, right? What? My, you know, my best friend I always tell you about, Jamal Jokes. His father, John Jokes, was in that show. John Jokes. I, that name sounds from it. John Earl Jokes. He does a lot of theater. He does a lot of uh, August Wilson plays. You guys show me his picture. Um, let me see. Okay. Me yeah, but who did he play? Uh, I'm trying to remember. The guy, the guy who played my dad is the guy from This Is Us. John, uh, Ron C. Ron C. Ron C. Jones. Jones. He passed yeah. away last year. He played my dad in the joint. Um, yeah, that 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 was going to be one of those ones. I'm no, I lie. bro, I already know. Yeah, we they. I saw just the, the dailies and was like, yo, this is next level. Like, four cameras. Like, it was John Boyega. He was... That's who I'm... Never mind. It wasn't him. It was John Boyega. Oh, John Boyega. Like, John Boyega was... His name's John. Oh, okay. Yeah. John Boyega John is Boyega the was one the I'm thinking yeah. he was. John yeah. Boyega, yep. That was his yeah. first... Well, after Attack the Block, the yeah. joint in UK. That's his first. But, uh, yeah, so we worked on that. That... Yeah, I'm still... That's day. a crazy one. Uh, not but you know, there's, hey, it, I mean, it's the game. Mm-hmm. There's something. There's something else coming. But it's just. But I, I know what you're like. Nah, you, we, you wonder though sometimes. Nah, you're like, Why? you want to know what the part is about that? I'm. We've been in this game so long. I'm used to rejection. I'm used to things falling through. But the part when you're the lead of a show, and when mm-hmm. you're the second lead of a show, that you go, you go through the contracts for the entire series, so you get to see what you're making. For the it's entire like run, but of that's the show. different. Yeah. So when you sign these contracts, you're signing the contract from now until the show is over. So I'm seeing, oh, I'm gonna be a quarter of a, I'm gonna have a quarter million dollars, oh, by the end of this year. shooting eight episodes, <laughs> and the next season I'm definitely gonna be a millionaire. Then the, and I'm like, oh shit, and then when it's you shoot the pilot and you're in this. In the honey wagon, yeah, in the wardrobe and makeup, and they're like, yeah, they're talking Emmys for y'all already, bro. Just based off of what we shot there, like, yeah. And I know it's facts, because the script is retarded. The script is created. Uh, John Ridley wrote it, who just, a few years after, wins the Oscar for 12 Years a Slave with <sighs> screenwriting. Okay, okay. Right, like, it's, the guy it's... who created Entourage is the EP. So all the boxes are checked. Spike Lee, first time back in TV. John Boyega. Little did we know it was going to be in Star Wars anyway. <laughs> no, I, I keep it a buck, bro. Well, so how far do I want to go on this on this podcast? Oh, let's go. How, how let's real go. do I want to get on this podcast? Uh, nah, you're my dog, so I will. Um, Spike, I don't believe Spike. So here's the thing. Two guys, there was John Boyega and the other guy that was up was a kid from Brooklyn. Okay. Who was a boxer. Uh, uh, I think amateur, but he was a boxer. Okay. He wasn't the best actor. Okay. Yeah. John Boyega just did Attack the Block, which was critically acclaimed already. Yeah. First American role. The studio wanted John Boyega. Spike wanted this kid. Mm-hmm. And... Literally, I, do, I come to L.A., I do my screen test. I'm going up against fucking Michael B. Jordan and Evan Ross. That was who it was. It was me, Mike, Evan Ross. And, but I knew I had it because I knew Spike already, and I knew I wasn't losing that role. Like, I wasn't. And mm-hmm. these are my dogs. Like, But I knew once I got in the room, it was over. I'm, I'm getting this role. Right. And the scene that they, it was set up so beautifully. The scene that they had me audition with. And I don't know if you, have you ever tested, because we didn't test for The Wire. We just came in. Yeah. But when you test for real, for real with HBO, you do it in a movie theater. CBS does that too. And it's like, the, and the theater is like, it's like a play. You're doing theater. You're doing You're theater just... <laughs> in front of all the execs and they're just sitting in there watching. Still face. And Don't give up. nervous in the front row. Like, all right guys, listen, whenever you guys are ready. And I'm, I've never seen Spike nervous in my life. And I'm just sitting here like, oh. Then they put you all in separate rooms 
all you and the actors, so you only see each other when one is going and one is leaving. <laughs> and I see Michael B. Jordan, and he wasn't Mike at the, like super like he is now. Yeah, yeah. But we're watching. I'm like, what's up? He like, what up? Like, cause we know each other for the show. <laughs> but I gotta, and, I gotta kill you I right gotta now. Kill you, right, and it's this crazy thing. So I come to LA. I do the screen test. I go do the, the next day. I leave. As I'm leaving, I get on the plane. I get off the plane. It's all over Hollywood Report. I get the call on my way to the plane that I booked. Oh, I get on the plane. I get off the plane six hours later. It's on everywhere. Hollywood Reporter. The, the cast is announced. Spike didn't really want John, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. He calls me. soon. I have 50 missed calls on my phone or from getting off the airplane. I, every person in my agency... From the that works in editorial, this, this, this has the, called you. the the maintenance people. I have voicemail. Hey, Julito, we just want to say congratulations. Uh, we're so happy. I never spoken. To I you. ain't never heard from these Ten niggas years years at this life. point. I never heard it from you. I right, cool, but one of them is called a Spike, and he's like, "Call me back now, as soon as you get off the plane." I call him, and he's like, "Hey, listen, I like the kid, but he wasn't my guy. But the studio really wants him, so we're going with John." I need you to hang out with John every. So he'll be. He's like he'll be here in a week. He's going back to the UK now. Get his stuff. He'll be here in a week. We got three. We got two months before we start shooting. Right. You need to be with John every day. Bring him to your hood. Bring him here. Bring him here. Ah. And so I was with John a lot prior to us shooting, and he used to tell me straight, bro. Like I don't really care about none of this shit. I want to be jumping off of buildings and jumping out of airplanes and fighting. He, I want to be doing I want to be an hard. action star he want, I want to be an shit. action star I don't care I would go to him and that's when I knew I, I wasn't on the level that I thought I was on because hanging out with him all the time we're going to agency we're going to cast and director offices mm -hmm. to just have meetings just hello meetings I was like nigga we can have meetings with the casting people to just say hi I'm in town I'm oh we're going up to fucking producers and having studio meetings and they're just telling him about projects that's not coming out until 2024 and this is 2018 and oh yeah we're doing takers too and we'd love to but no it's just conversations but you're having right. and i was like i never did none of this shit in my 10 plus at this point it was 10 10 14 year career i've never done any of this i would say that sounds either like uh Either you have incredible reps or yeah. you're somewhat of a <laughs> what? <Brilliant>. plant. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga. That's what I'm saying. Bro, I was sitting There's here. There's no way. We were walking in the office and because I would go in with him and then I'd wait in the oh, waiting room. Yeah. Tight. Then I'd wait in the waiting room for him and Tom Cruise is just walking out. Yeah, bro. There, from there's having something the meeting. Else. There's something else in his in his thing. Like, cause I even think. There's a, not saying he's not a great actor, yeah. but but there's something he was else. set up. There's yeah. he was set up to yeah. win, and he was he, very set. Like he was he was comfortable. He was so see for me. I don't know if it's maybe the New Yorker in me or the I had been working and grinding it out for ten plus years at that point. But it was like he had this level of comfort in him doing this project that it was like. He doesn't give a fuck. And you're like, there's out. a lot on the fucking line. I'm sitting there like, nigga, 50, this amount of money an episode? This has to work. I I got a crib. I got my apartment. Like, while we would, I used the money from, dumb shit, I was young, right? <laughs> I was 8, 19, but I used the money from the pilot episode and got my first apartment. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. this is real, bro. Like, and he would, and not saying anything. Is maybe it's his, his culture, his personality. He was just like comfortable, nigga. Well, comfortable, even I'm gonna be bro. real with you, bro. If any, even any nigga saying, honestly, bro, fuck all this. I want to be jumping out of planes. For someone to be saying that, that already means that like you're so far past. Man, I'm just happy that I'm leading a, a job. He's the that, number one lead on the call sheet. He's just like yeah. that's what I mean. So there mean that there means that there's he, there's more to that story that we don't know, mm. or or like I said, he could just have the greatest reps in the world in the UK that brought him. But well, attack the block. It it came out. It was a project out there. It was an indie, and it 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 blew up in the right. in in the 
in London, in the UK. It blew up out there. Uh. But still, yeah. right? Like, for you to, okay, the show doesn't get picked up for no one knows what reason. And HBO, when they don't pick your show up, there's no selling it to them. They own it. We wasn't ah. shooting it during pilot season. We shot it in, like, the middle of the, Like, it was shot to be premiering in a few months. That's when we... Like, it wasn't like, oh, it's January, February, March, and we got a pilot, and we're going to shoot it and see what happens. No. they It was uh, the real deal. But for it to not get picked up, and then not even three months later, he booked Star Wars? Yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe it's something that we don't... But I use those examples to be like... I, I forgot how we got here, but the the journey has always been like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, it's you. always been crazy. It's always been that. Like my career with Spike, my it's always been rocky. But but you know what? I'll tell you just how you were giving me shit the other day, where you were like, "No, nigga, like you don't realize, and like, you just be saying shit." That's exactly what Jermaine was saying, though. Remember, he was like, "Yeah, but." It, yeah. It, it it well it can be, yeah. it, that's oh, you seeing. And I was like, oh, it's just consistency. It's like right, the consistency of it is different. Yeah. But you know, I'm, nigga, I've never I, all shit I've done. You want to make fun of yeah. me, you know, nigga? I've never been sitting in no room and it's fucking. I, I might have been in a room with Evan Ross and Michael B. Jordan, but it wasn't going for the same job. Mm. You see what I'm getting at? It. Like it's it. it it says something about like it. where and we've and the crazy part is. It also says something that the four of us can do the thing that we did, and we've all had opportunities like that since. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm getting at. So it's like, that's that proof in the pudding where you go, well, man, shit. Hey, man, there got to be something to this shit. Oh, This shit shit can't be a fluke. Oh, but I've always (laughs) known that. I've I've watched situations, and I'd be like, oh, this is deeper than rap. This is deeper than acting. This is not, (laughs) you just went in, and you didn't have the greatest... performance in front of a cast director. Nah, this shit, some people are set up mm-hmm. in place to like win before you even know they exist. Some Even on the back end, like, so for me, full transparency, mm-hmm. like, I know, like, my, and we were talking about this, reps, like, they don't follow up for shit. Like, bro, if, they, if this was a game of rebounds and, and putting it back up, mm-hmm. nigga, we, uh, points off the board would be zero. Yeah. Like, it, it's just, because I know it's, I know there's no one picking up like, hey, hey, did you just want yeah. to follow back up? See yeah. if could he send you another tape? How yeah. about that? None yeah. of that shit. Like you didn't even know that was a thing as point at a point. Exactly. I didn't even know you could call them and be like, hey, how did the audition go? I didn't know that until I started seeing my active friends and they're like, yeah, I just had my reps call and check in and see. And I'm like, oh, you can do that? Yeah. No, like these niggas don't, bro, they are, and especially now with like the casting networks and all that kind of shit. They be wanting niggas to upload their auditions to a login. I'm just like, here's my thing. If you're new, this is the new system. This is how we do this it. This is and how you, we you do just it. Start, yeah. You started since the internet. I feel you. Yeah. But like, no. Yeah. You you should send my videos to the people. What the fuck else do you do? What do you do? Not for At least for me. No. You, you send me yeah. shit that you don't create that, yeah. so I can go audition yeah. for it. Yeah. And then if I do the right things... Yep. I get it. Now, if you got one of those reps who is beating the gr- hey, yeah. John, if you got one of those John Boyega reps or wherever on, those people are. Somebody, hell, hell yeah. yeah, I get it. No, that and that is what you need. But I feel like it's the same thing. Those are the hustlers who just went into that industry. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of those people in that industry are cubicle type people. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They are. They're not they're system players. They're system players. Yeah, yeah. yeah they only know my, my homie Chris Lofton was telling me this. He was yeah. like, he was like, bro, you got to remember these niggas only know people because it's like, oh yeah, I worked with him over at, or we went to school yep. over at. Like they don't yep. know niggas from being out in the out in the Outside, action. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yo, it's about who you have drinks with. You were telling me about the wire. You found out. What did you say? You found out you yeah, got the wire yeah. before the casting people. Yeah. Called. So. Um, shout out my brother Mark John Jeffries. He um so I found out I got the wire like a few days after my initial audition because I was at another audition. I think it was for Get Richard Out Trying, which he ended mm-hmm. up getting. And I'm like, why am I auditioning for the young 50 cent? What the fuck? I got long I got long hair. This just makes no sense. But anyway, uh 
Yeah, so I'm at the audition, and me and Mark were always cool because his his dad, my mom, they would always vibe in the you know in the waiting room areas and okay, in the waiting yeah. room, so they were always cool. And uh, yeah, I remember walking down the street with him one day, and he like, "Yo, congrats!" And this is two days, maybe three days after my initial wire audition. Yeah, and he was like, "Yeah," uh, I'm like, "He's like, congrats." I'm like, "On what?" He's like, "Yo, I heard you booked a wire," and I'm like, "No, I didn't." He's like, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did, bro. That's and wild. I'm like, oh, all right. And then like two days later, we get a call. And they're like, hey, yeah, so we, um, yeah, so we want you to come up. We're going to screen. So a lot of people don't know I was the first boy of the four to have the role. And they kind of helped. They asked me to come to Baltimore to kind of like, I think they, you were also, there was nobody else. That they wanted besides you, but for the for for Main and uh, for excuse me for Dookie and Michael, they were like they, it was like a chemistry t- test. A chemistry test. Yeah, yeah, they were like, yeah, come, we want you to come to Baltimore. But then I get there and I'm thinking, oh shit, there's other people. Like, where's the other name in? And they was like, there is no other name in. I <laughs> Nigga, was like, this gotta work. So they didn't tell me that I had the role yet, uh, but there's no other name in. Oh, you know what that is, right? What's that? We don't want to pay you yet, but we're gonna have you come do this chemistry read. Ooh, I never Another that. old school game. Old school, old school, old school, school game. game. You know why? Because you want the job, right? You want the job. So you going to come from New York. I, I, I'm going to guess you, you came by bus. Nah, they put me. They, they, oh, oh, they did? No, they did. They took care okay, of everything. They took, yeah. Okay, at least no, they no, did no, that. No, 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 no. They took care of everything. They had the car service outside. Oh, okay. And, and New Good. York is so close to Baltimore, they put me on a train. But, and, but it's like their Seller Express. It's fancy. They did it, though. They did it right, yeah. At least, because you got to think. Oh, so yeah. many times they'll be like, well, we just want to see him again and but read really? him against some other people. Yeah. And now it's like, well, we get him for a day. Yeah. No, I dig that. No. So if they didn't pay for shit, I would have been like, uh, no, but they, they did it right. Okay. But I didn't know I still had it yet. But <laughs> right. I had a conversation with Mark a few days prior who he he was killing us. If Mark was in the room, just bye. Have a good yeah. night. Right? Like, yeah. we've been that kid for... So yeah. We we were that for other people too, but Mark was that for me. Bro, he was the people's PC commercial kid. Oh, I never even. No, that nigga's that. roots run deep. Oh no no, yeah. he's been acting like he, like yeah. I parallels like yeah. that nigga's was doing like I remember seeing him in ads like oh that's another black kid who's doing ads yeah like, yeah crazy. yeah y'all two were yeah yeah and he um yeah so I knew. Because of the conversation with him, and he probably had a rep that was like, "Hey, checking in on that wire audition," and they're like, "Oh yeah, they cast in Julito," and they're like, "Oh, right." So, right. and because he, he's my dog, he told me. But yeah, I get there, and I'm like, "Where's the other name?" Because I see two Michaels, I see two Jermaines. You weren't there. You were in a. People don't know, Maestro wasn't at like the initial screen test because he was. They told me they were like, "Yeah, the Randy, the kid we have interested in, interest in Randy, he's um in Asia doing the opening of the." Hong Kong Disney World. I'm like, who the fuck this nigga think he is? What do you mean? We all here. We had to get on again. Fucking Baltimore and the fucking. You remember the uh, the the offices were like in the oh the boonies the boondocks. Like I'm like, where the fuck is he? The closest thing to eat was that fucking truck the truck stop. stop. That's why I gained 15 pounds you in a crazy. season Yo. because we would bacon cheeseburgers every morning. Bro, this nigga would go get bacon cheeseburgers and then with nothing. And at this at the time, you didn't like nothing on your burgers. You were like, nah, nah, I don't want all that yeah. stuff on it. What did you like Just on it? Ketchup and cheese. Just ketchup and cheese. That's and it. yo, and I remember I used to be like, yo. Huli, get these bags. You could see, you could see the, the grease, grease at the bottom of the bag. I'm like, what? Yeah, let me tell you, we're joking. No, that you're absolutely real, <laughs> but we're joking about it. But yo, you know what? When you look back in hindsight, and you look at the like life, mm-hmm. that was the first time I ever could order anything like that in my life. Right. I got to the wire, bro. You gotta understand. Prior to the wire, like. We, my mother had a few dollars. We had a few dollars, but it wasn't like mm-hmm. we're eating McDonald's every day if we could. It was like, nigga, we, I'm going to cook, and you better be grateful if you get seconds. Right. I get to Baltimore where we have people who are, their job is to get whatever we want. 
Like, right? We have PAs that are basically our assistant. Right. They, right? Like, who is the, who is the uh, Asian lady? Oh, Nico. Nico. Yeah. Nico's job was to do whatever we said. So if it right. was like, on top of her real job as a production assistant. Right. But she was, a, a like, a, she was given to us. Can I get a Sprite? Boom. If it's not there, someone's going to the store. Right. It was, so I didn't have, we, then we would get per diem, shit like, so I had an abundance up until that, like, that I never had up until that point. Right, right. So the reason, it wasn't like I was a hound and I was a starving nigga. That's why I wanted to order cheap. It's because I, this is the first time in my life I could. Could, yeah. Then no, I get on see. set and it's a crafty table. I was going to say, and you could go off. They got desserts. I could do got... whatever I, I right. could never. And then I didn't have somebody like, yo, chill. Because I'm the star of the show. Because we're the stars of the show. I was talking shit. No, you <laughs> was. Because you were the smartest one on the set because you had a history of 15 I years did. of working. I was a vegetarian. And that's why, hold on. And this is why if you watch season episode one, I'm skinny. He's a little chunky. By episode 13, I'm a little chunky. He's skinny because you were smart. We were. I'm from the hood. I had no idea what the fuck we were doing, bro. <laughs> you were like, this is a this lick. Is let's a go. Lick. Let's go. While you were like, nigga, I'm going vegetarian. Because I'll never forget, and I want to tell them. we they So when we got to maybe shoot in episode four or five, they had us like, oh, we have a cut of the first episode. <laughs> So we want the boys to come to the office and watch the first episode. <laughs> that nigga Maestro was so disgusted with himself when he saw how he looked <laughs> in that first episode. <laughs> it was like, nigga, I'm going on a diet today. N now. And if you watch the last episode, you look like you lost like 20 pounds. Oh, bro. I went crazy. So I have a whole story with that. So I, that was... You want to talk about some uh, trauma? I don't, you know, I don't say trauma, but it was some trauma. Uh, when I was in Atlanta, part of my, like, you know, being an artist, toughening up and shit, yeah. was like, first off, I'm around grown niggas all day. Yeah. So that's already, and then to an extent, you know, like I got old school parents. Yeah. They love me a whole yeah. lot. I'm, you know, sheltered to an extent. Yeah. Going down there, it's like a whole bunch of niggas who don't really give a fuck about you and don't really know really know my history mm. like they in atlanta you're saying yeah in atlanta so like when i moved down there with jd and all that kind of oh, stuff oh yeah. gotcha so gotcha, it was gotcha. like yeah it's like I, I i look back jd used to all the time be like oh why don't you just do shit like a normal kid like why don't you act like a normal kid like you don't do kid shit like mm. he would always say that and i would be lost because i'm like i feel like i do but in hindsight Looking at all the things I've done, I'm like, oh right, that's why I didn't just do kid shit. I didn't just think like, it. I didn't just fall into something and it was like, oh shit, this is. You yes, were a I'm well a oiled machine at that. At point. that point, yeah, and so it was. It's just it's it's weird. Uh, it's weird because uh, yeah. So basically, I saw how I looked in that, and back in Atlanta, they used to call me Little Manny Fresh. Cause I was like, I had the fro, and mm -hmm. I was like chunky, mm -hmm. and I was yeah, no, like I got it, cause I was bro, I was eating. That was my version of the wire. Yeah, for me. Yes, that was got my version. It. So I got to go down there. I'm 12. Mm. I'm living with JD and Janet. I can do whatever I want. Mm. There's people there who have to run, run. bro. It's I'm just figuring this out. Like, there's people who have to run, go get me food. Whatever the interns at the studio. Yep, nigga, I want. Wendy's every day. Every I went, day, yeah. I went crazy, and then I hadn't done TV in a while, mm. so I had started gaining weight, like on some real shit. Even when I did The Lion King, I'll never forget. They had to add an extra piece in my corset mm. when I was playing Simba, and it was be. And they somebody actually one of the producers. I mean, they would never do this now, and the world's so fucking timid. Yeah. They had a whole conversation with me. I'm yeah. a 12 year old. They had a conversation with me. They were like, I'll never forget. He was like, Well, you know. Todd, you know, like he might get extra pie. The guy was a little chunkier. He was like, he might get extra pie or whatever at lunch, but like, you know, I can't do that. You know, our bodies are different and we got to be mindful of like, well, and mostly it was just because they didn't want to have to keep remaking my fucking costume. Mm. But yeah, I started realizing after, now I'm starting to see it was like, yeah, I got that freedom there. My parents always kept me somewhat in check. I got that freedom there. Mm. Ate whatever the fuck I wanted. Went crazy. Yeah. Then saw myself for the first time on TV for real. Oh. Again with that. Oh, I never thought of that. That's why. Yeah, I remember the you vision. I remember like 
maybe you like didn't even want to watch like you could you didn't even want to watch it no more. Yeah. You just kept with like where it's us for. They got us in the dark. We watching the TV and you were just like what the fuck? Like so, like you had a, a yeah. outwardly reaction to watching yourself yeah. and you went ham, nigga. Yeah. But you were that smart to watch that and be like, "Nah, I got to I got to get better." What am I doing? Cuz I even And saw, we're also growing. I saw That's how they were like they were making me the fat kid. I saw it because every every group has a fat kid. Mm. But why is the only group that doesn't have a fat kid? Why mm. is that? Because the fat kid got skinny. Wow. Literally, bro. I, I listened to smart, Chris bro. Brown's first album and I ran on the treadmill. Yeah, that's what was popping at that time. Because oh, I hosted what? the I hosted the concert at Morgan State. Okay. With Chris Brown and T Pain, and it was that album. We ran that to the ground. Oh, that album was Baby You mm-hmm. Winning. Oh, those mm-hmm. fucking records. Ah, this is crazy. Like uh, but yeah, uh, yes. I did all, bro, all those. Ran, I would do an hour on the treadmill every day. I went vegetarian. The only thing I, the only cheat thing I'd eat is french fries, for real. Mm. And then everything else was just like fish, greens, you know, wow. no other fried, no fried foods. Yeah. All that. And then that I makes like, so much sense. Yeah. But I didn't have that the wherewithal right. or the knowledge or experience or even the like person to be like, yo. I know what you mean. And I wasn't gr- drastic, my change, right? It didn't go from no. skinny to fat. No. I was still skinny throughout the series. Throughout the series. But you yeah. can see it. I'm Colombian, bro. We got to be <laughs> mindful. We can't eat a, a, a two pieces of chicken before it's going to show on somewhere. Right. So, like, it was it was only showing in my face, but also we were going through puberty at that time. Facts. And things, so things are just changing. Things are just changing. But, um, yeah, so it was the first time I, I had a, a chance of abundance when it came to nah, things. And, <laughs> nah, the, and without the world, though, to be like, all right, I'm going to relax now. Nah, bro. Listen, it's understandable. Yeah. Like I said, I it saying that I'm realizing I'm like, oh, I did it. Too. That's the thing. Wolf, we'll, we all generally, especially people who are in the same, and mm-hmm. we do the same things. We just at judge when other people do it at different times. That's fact. That's all it is. Yeah. Because you're great. It, it, we're all gonna end up doing even like something like that. I would have never processed that that way and been like, oh right, so I've done this. Mm. I had that same freedom and I did it because yeah. I because I didn't have the wherewithal. Yeah, I just got it yeah. earlier because of some random scenario. Yeah, and also what what's different is your kind of let loose was happening in a mansion with cooks and with this and with mines was happening at a truck stop in the middle of Baltimore on the greasy <laughs> ass. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, you were eating Wendy's and shit, but still, like we, I was, we were eating truck stop food. Because that was the, <laughs> it was no was Uber good, Eats. Though. That shit was mad that good. Shit was mad but good. there was no Uber Eats. Right. That's another thing. Maybe that's why I didn't realize I was getting big too. Because you know what? No real front facing cameras all the fucking time. You're not just taking videos of ourselves. Right, like, selfies and I would have realized sooner. No, like you take pictures of yourself, but that's and it. You see it. Yeah. Right. Right. That's crazy. Uh-huh. It's, Our side is 2020, man. Man, imagine if we had Uber Eats when we were shooting. That. Also, Uber wouldn't have wanted to come to that neighborhood. And also we would have ran that bill up crazy. Crazy. That that HBO account would have been <laughs> fucked. I, we were, I want this today. I want this today. Get it. And, and she would have been, they would have got it. Their job was to make us happy by, yeah. it, by any means. Look, at least while we were, at least while we were on that set. That I'm, I'm thinking set. now about sc- schooling, oh, Ben. Man. Ben. Miss Helene. Miss Helene. We did Ben dirty. We got to talk about that when we got all of yeah, them. Yeah, man, ben, got- ben was... Uh, he was an asshole. He was an asshole. He was an ass. He was an asshole. He probably still is an asshole. Yeah, I mean, I think life. it was. I think the that'd dip- be fucked up if Ben is dead. But uh, <laughs> that would don't be, say that. That would be <laughs> fucked up if I said he's still an asshole. What's crazy is he was not an asshole. He literally was doing his job. Yeah, but you know what it was. He was. Whereas. You know they were both Caucasian, so where? Oh no! I mean, let's give context. Yeah, we're talking about the our homeschool teacher that was on our onset. Our onset teachers. Teachers. So we had one female. Her name was Miss Helene, and a man named Mister Bent. So Miss Helene, she was like Honey, Miss Honey 
from Matilda. Yes. She was like Miss Honey, Honey from, from Matilda. Matilda. She was the sweetest. Sweet. She had a golden doodle. She was. She did have a golden yeah. doodle. Oh, yeah. Yo, you unlock memory. <laughs> yeah. She had a, a dog she, she would bring. Uh, and he, he was so sweet. And then she was she was really nice. Uh, and what, what I noticed, even looking back on it, she tried and was like one of those people who tried and wanted to understand us. Yeah. And, and, she fell in love with us. And, and, and cared to. Whereas yeah. Ben did his, his white dude, did his job. Bald yes. glasses. He looked like, he looked like Perf- a bald Lance Armstrong. He did look like a bald Lance Armstrong. Or, have you ever seen the movie 50-50? 50-50, no. You never saw 50? Wait. Are you fucking... Let me see. With, with Seth Rogen and George, Joseph Gordon-Levitt? Oh, I've never seen you, it, but I. Oh, you gotta watch fifty. Who, who does who does he look like? He looks that? like when Joseph Gordon, uh, Joseph Gordon. Oh, shaves his head. Shaves his head. <laughs> yes. He looked like yes. that. Like that was a younger version of him, and then he turns into Lance Armstrong. Yes, facts. He was yeah, or Magneto, but oh. whoever. <laughs> he Magneto. He would turn into Magneto. He, he he had the personality of Professor X. Yeah, he like I felt like he was one of those people who. Without social media and black culture being amplified the way that it is now, mm. there would be a lot of people who don't maneuver or act the way that they do now. Yeah, and I yeah. feel like in that time, you could be a man like Ben and be completely isolated due to the internet not being where it is now. Right. And I felt like right. he was like, okay, I'm teaching. He never did anything crazy, but almost like a condescendingness to him. Yeah. Like, I'm teaching you four little black kids who I know don't want to be here, but okay. Yeah. I'm telling you, this is well. That's that's not gonna happen. Yeah. Like he would do a lot of things like that. Yeah, like very, yeah. very condescending. Very condescending. Right. And you, for us, we we as adults could have understood it and took it and been like, all right, whatever. You're just oh, you're one of those. Who, who yeah. cares? As kids, we were like, this nigga's the fucking Grim Reaper. Get him out of here. <laughs> like we complained so they fired him. But didn't they bring him back, or did they get rid of him? Just get rid of him. They got rid of him. No. How did Miss Helene get there? They used to switch. Oh, they did. Yeah. But then Miss Helene came a lot more, though. Yeah, I think Yeah, probably, eventually yeah. they were like, but we complained all the time. He used to re- ride his bike and wear those fucking hats. <laughs> <laughs> With the flashlight on it? <laughs> he's such a he's Yeah, such, a, such a geek. Such a dork, bro. And he was just annoying. And we used to give him shit all the time. Oh, boy. And then Miss Helene came and was, like, people don't know, she cried the last day of set. Wow. Yeah, she cried. You remember that? That I don't remember. Yeah, she cried the last day of set, bro. Damn. Last day we did work with her. Um, Yeah. Maybe you weren't that day, there that day. That's what I'm saying. Maybe I didn't work that day. Oh, remember, I was on the last scene of the last episode, and we shot it in that order. So that's oh, why. Oh, right. The last scene we shot of that whole series was the, my last scene. Oh. Yeah, and that was the last day I worked with her. Look and at she, you. Yeah, but she cried that day, bro. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. But she got two years, especially because she got two years with uh, Tristan and- Oh, they brought her back. Oh, did they? Oh, I don't know. Wait, because you're, are you talking about season five or season four? Season four. Oh, I don't know who their schooling was season five. They you still need a schooling, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Especially May. Tristan yeah, right. was like probably 17, 18, but yeah. They definitely, yeah. That's wild. Mm-hmm. She was she was she was literally Miss Honey from Matilda. Shout she, out Miss yeah, Ellie and wherever she, she is. Was, we gotta yeah. find that lady, man. I know, I gotta I I found her last name, but that'd be the hard thing too. People don't be having accounts or profiles. Yeah, and, stuff. and they'd be older, so like why am I why am I checking for? this? Yeah. yeah. And we've spoken so highly about her. I want like I hope she one day comes across us talking about her. Because she has to be older now. That was yeah. That was twenty years. Twenty ago. years ago. So wow. Yeah. She has to be. I co- She t- probably don't doesn't even think we remember her. Well, I would hope she knows. But she don't think we remember her enough to talk about her in interviews. Good point. I see. You know who's saying? talking yeah. about their tutor from a set on an interview. That- <laughs> that's very true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, if you make that, that's the cool thing. If you make that kind of impact on somebody's life, though, because yeah. also you got to think, 
we all were coming, and I wanted to even talk about that, like mm-hmm. we, because we were all coming from completely different spaces, mm-hmm. needing different things at different times. Absolutely. And you know, a teacher in any situation has to take some of that on because regardless of if it's energy you're coming from home with, or yeah. I'm coming from home with, or Jermaine, anything, you know, yeah. what I mean? or what's happening on set, or yeah. like there's a way to maybe that sometimes Ben didn't know how to do that either, whereas Helene knew how to. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. What did you say you want to talk about? Oh, no, I was going to say, I want to discuss, too, like, the backgrounds of, like, how you were, because they don't know each of us had a different way of getting to set every day. Yeah. Like, in a sense of where we were coming from, mm-hmm. where, like, I like I stayed in Baltimore. Yep. You were coming back, what was it, every every weekend, right? Yeah, so I we shot the show for almost a year, and I went back home every, so we shot on Friday, straight from set. Back, my bags are packed. They're dropping me to the bus to the Greyhound, and I'm dr- taking from the Greyhound every Friday back to Brooklyn, staying until Sunday, coming back to Baltimore every weekend for a year straight. Because my mom, we had, I had little brothers and sisters, and my brother that's right over me at the time. If I'm 15, he's 18, 17. He's watching my little sister and little brother, right? And he's at home all week. And while my mom was with me in Baltimore, with either. My, I had a new, she had a newborn at the time, my little sister, or my little brother, who was like six at the time. Right. So she, she couldn't be in Baltimore on the weekends chilling if I wasn't working. So we f- got on that Greyhound every weekend, That's every crazy. single weekend. I know you were exhausted. Bro, I was, bro, it was one of the worst experiences. That, just that, the traveling and that, and the work is, like, if it wasn't for y'all, and what the relationship we had on set, the relationship we had, the fun we had, the joy we had. Like, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have survived that shit, bro. Like, I was depressed. I was stressed out. I was missing home. I was exhausted. Right. Because we worked, bro, they worked us an illegal amount of hours. Like, t- niggas don't know that. Like, yeah. they worked us an illegal amount of hours, especially those first, like, six, seven episodes. Like, we were not supposed to be working that long. Really? Hell yeah, bro. I'm remember, trying to remember which nights, bro, bro. Remember, we bank. We were supposed to be doing three hours of school every day. We never did three hours of school oh, ever. That's why we were banking. Hours. We were banking hours. We weren't, bro. If a SAG a law enforcer came on the set, they would have gotten fined or something, bro. <laughs> we had we left here with like a thousand hours bank, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. We never did a full three hours. Like, for real, for real. Like, maybe yeah. one day a no, week. No, that was, like, in the beginning. In, in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, bro. We never did. And that's what Ben used to complain about, too. Ah. Ben used to be like, they're supposed to be in school for three hours. And they're like, but you can get one of them. Yeah, no, yo. They, they used to hit that <laughs> shit up. Look, I... I, I I can give you. We don't. We don't need Who him don't right now. Need? And Please we don't come. You gotta come. I'm in the trailer wall, and I'm with ch- chicks. I'm with y'all laughing. Julito, come to the trailer. You Aye. have to come here. You, you definitely got some chips in your hand. You're yeah. like, all right, give me a second, man. Do you? Only, I'm in a sidekick all day. We. I only like being in school if y'all were there. If it was right. just it was one, weak. it was trash. Weak. It was weak. You in here? <laughs> I remember walking past one day and seeing you in there doing real work by yourself. I was like, I thought my nigga was in jail, bro. <laughs> I walked past like, damn, bro. I think oh, I was. Li- I had Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were in there doing Hell real yeah. work, nigga. And I was like, and you went right over to that computer, got on Sconex. <laughs> Yo, this nigga loved the Sconex. It's a legendary, legendary app. Legendary <laughs> site, excuse me. And then I had to put him on MySpace. Maestro was the first person ever in life to put me on MySpace. I think my first picture was that picture we had to, me, you, and me. Oh, in the bathroom. Yeah, that was my first yeah. profile picture. And that was at the production office. That That's was hilarious. at the production office, bro. Like, you, yeah, you've been in, putting me on the new innovations. Yeah, since I've been in LA, he's taught me so much about <laughs> technology and podcasting. And, hey, yeah, you you are you are ahead of your time. Thank you, ahead bro. of your time, bro. That's a bro. We had so much, oh my god, so much fun. I was I was telling. Where was I just telling the story? Were we just talking out there when I was telling about the time you got your uh you got a manicure? 
You wouldn't got your sidekick oh, and your manicure. I got my side. sidekick. Yeah. yeah. This, this dude was like, after I, after he saw the sidekick, he was like, nah, I got it. Because he was on his phone all, all day. day. Yeah. All day. Yeah. He was on Instant Messenger. Yeah, I, had I the am chicks in New popping. York. I am was popping. Uh, bro. And, and then I saw this nigga with a sidekick. And I was like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, yeah, man, you can get your email. You can get your, you can, you can go online on this thing, bro. You can. Son. Yo, that nigga when he got him one, he was like, yo, it's game time. But yeah, it, yeah we were at the we were at the Galleria. And Galleria. I, I'll Baltimore. never forget this. You I said something. I was like, man, I was like, I should get a manicure. This nigga said, bam. And he just had his whole shit glossy. I was like, okay. okay. I was like, this nigga really old. Yo, bro, yeah, good ass memories, bro. How we used to watch um, Anchorman, Anchorman, the Family Guy day, movie. The Family Guy movie. But we Anchorman, we ran to the fuck. We used to perform the scenes. Star rockets in flight. Boo! Afternoon delight. Boo! All right. So what's that? <laughs> Bro, we used to perform that for people in the office. Do you remember that? Afternoon <laughs> delight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the people used to just be like, be these, like fucking, these kids. fucking kids are crazy. What is wrong with them, bro? Bro, we li- but you gotta understand, we also turned that set up, bro. Before that, they were they were having fun, but they wasn't having like nah. We nah. had that set lit up like you, youth brings a different yeah yeah a different energy bro. we had like, that like we had david simon laughing we had people like we used to bother ed burns every day trying to figure out who gonna die every day because that was it on the set it was about staying alive every episode we didn't right. know until i think one day i don't know if remember this we find ed finally told us like no one's gonna die you remember that? He said, oh, oh, you're right, because I was in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. You, Your character was, yeah, and they were like, we was nervous. It was looking yeah. bad for you. And yeah. we were like, yo. we we." I remember us asking at least once a week out of a year straight, like, are we dying? Are we, tell us what's happening. Are we dying? Like, tell us, can you tell us what's going to happen? I feel like he's only, what did he tell me? I think he was the first one to tell me on the low that Bunny was going to adopt me, man. Okay. Yeah, cause that, but it was literally from begging, like, please tell me what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen, what's, please. Um, but then he, I think he had told all of us at one point, like, no one's gonna die. Like, yeah, just stop. Cause it was annoying, bro. Imagine four <laughs> kids. And just, one just well, really popped. three, cause Jermaine never really. He didn't have the personality to like to Jermaine. Die. No, yeah. but May, no, I mean him naturally. Like he was cool. Oh, you saw, oh yeah, he didn't. Care. Yeah, he didn't really care too much about stuff. He was like, he was on he was on his own. Yeah, yeah, he was chilling. But I think it's also that youth, like being the youngest one too. Yeah. Like even though it wasn't by a whole lot, mm-hmm. it still makes a huge difference. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. But yeah, we we turned we turned that set up. We had we brought that youthful, that live energy that I think people appreciated eventually. Maybe not in the moment. Eventually. Eventually, yeah. Maybe not in the moment because there was a lot of times where it's like, yo, stop laughing. We have to shoot a scene. Oh, man. Yeah. Like the fucking scene. Or us not realizing our mics are off saying stupid shit. (laughs) Or when we realized our mics were on and then we still say stupid shit. Yeah. 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 I I put my foot in my mouth a few times. Yeah. Talking shit about people. Yeah. Yeah. And you were like, yo, you were always so advanced. You just knew shit. Like, you knew, like, oh, this is not, we shouldn't be doing, why do they have us in here? Right. And we're like, I don't care. Like, whatever. We should. And you're like, why is this like this? You, (laughs) you, You were always like that, bro. Like, why is this school trailer this? Oh, wh- why was our school trailer a fucking windowless trailer yeah. that had like no heater or anything in yeah. it that they had to get like a like a pseudo heater with the lights and shit because it would be freezing. freezing. Yeah. Like no, nah, bro. Like yeah, there was they were they didn't you know they didn't spend money on yeah. I mean, incredible show. It was done exactly how it should have been done. But like on the back end, like bro, remember they gave us iPod shuffles. Yeah. Yeah. There was three other types of iPods they could buy. And they, <laughs> and they gave us Gucci wallets with the with just the Gucci logo. And then remember our parents had to fight to get those fucking gift cards that they see. So basically we were supposed to I think it was a TCA gift. 
Oh. And then we got these. Uh, HBO was supposed to give us these like gift cards to anywhere we wanted. It was up to like I think it was like a thousand dollars or something mm. like that. And like these shits weren't working. And so then like my parents like my mom figured out who to call. We had to reach out to the. And then they finally made sure like oh it worked. It's like yeah, hey, I don't remember none of that. It didn't go to me. That went to my mom. But that's my point. That's that follow up shit. No, but what I'm saying is I didn't even know about that. Cause uh, I, I didn't, it didn't come to me. Damn. It, like it wasn't like here, Julito. This is yours. Do what you want. I don't believe so. It was like that's why I'm like this is news. I didn't even know we got that. Damn. Yeah. That's that's you, you had that shuffle though. I had that <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> and that shuffle, nigga. <laughs> And that shuffle saved my life on them Greyhound trips, nigga. Oh, I can only imagine. Bro, I, I used to have, bro. No, bro. And the, there was no, like, you could just watch TikTok. And it had and HBO it's on it, too. Yes. It, had it HBO faded, on though. It. You remember it started oh, chipping it off at the bottom? Oh, it started fading. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro. That shuffle saved my life on them Greyhounds, bro. That shuffle saved my life on them. See, it, it was pointless to y'all because y'all are not traveling for three hours a week. Right. And Jermaine already lived there, so. So it wasn't like y'all, y'all probably didn't listen to the shit because it was like, I don't need this. Like, oh, no, no, I did. Bro, that shit was my saving grace. What, like listening to that damn shuffle, bro. On that Greyhound, I was able to just zone out, have that shuffle, and just vibe. Like, not listen to my mother, finally get rest because I didn't work all week. <laughs> Fucking every scene, every day. Yeah, bro. That's wild. Yeah. 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 Man. How long is this podcast? We're at hour 18. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Oh, we, all right, we oh, still oh, got more. Am I that boring? No. I was just, I felt like it was like three hours. <laughs> We've been talking about mad shit. Bro, that's what I'm saying. That's why I just let it go. Oh, we we've been. I, I know that thing's been killing me. No, it's me. not killing me. Right, not... I just like touching it. Pull oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, making yeah. sure. That's the podcast and shit. They just touch <laughs> it. They don't even know why they're touching it. They're just like. And you know, like I have to have like producer brain on too. So I'm like, does he does he need? I just it's the podcast. Like, it's no, a, it's I, a podcast I, thing. He's like, sir, I know how a mic mic yeah, stand. Works. It's just a podcast thing. <laughs> but yeah, bro. Man, so many memories. Man, I'm trying to think what's like one standout thing. Like what? Just one standout thing. That we experienced, that we we it's probably so, talked about yesterday, and we <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's so no, it's so many because we shot for so long. Just I can remember that that episode where we shot. Um, remember we had the Chinese outside. Yes, that first remember. episode mm -hmm. when and they told us don't eat it, and then we ate it <laughs> every take. For like five, six takes, and they were like, "Yo, don't eat the food because you're gonna have to keep eating it the same way." And if you ever watch that episode, my plate is finished, and that's from all that moment. You Yo, watch all of us. You said, "I want that General Tao General chicken." General Tao chicken. <laughs> you know that? What did you order? I got. Uh, I probably had like some shrimp fried rice. Yo, yes, you did have shrimp yeah. fried rice. What did uh, Jermaine had to get that yakami? Wait, shit. I, wait, damn! Yeah, I was gonna say Tristan's first, and then say it was so fucked up because they were like, "Yo, Jermaine had it the worst, bro." Because they were like, "Yo, you guys can order anything you want, but you have to order what's in the script." The yakami, the yakami, whatever the fuck that is. Because though, because uh, what is it? The fiends be uh, yeah, throwing so, that shit up. It up. To, to, uh, they, who says that cat? What character says that? Is it mine or yours? I think nah. Uh, oh, Tristan, Tristan, Tristan Michael. Yeah. yeah, but that day was mad fun. We were in the. Where were we? Just the, like some like a, a random Chinese spot. Yeah, random Chinese yeah. spot. But it was like a nice area though. And that was a night like we didn't do. It feels like we didn't do a ton of night shoots together. Yeah, we us. didn't. We didn't. Yeah. That was a night shoot. That one, and then when we get the uh, officer, whatever his name is. I feel like we shot that. Did we shoot that the same day, maybe? Yeah, I think we so. We shot that the same day where we throw the paint on him. Yeah. And I made a mistake and throw it at his back the very first take. <laughs> I threw the oh, whole yeah, you paint, threw the paint can, can at his Head back. Ass. But no, because, bro, you don't you underestimate how heavy the can is. Oh, and, and they're at like, that age. yeah, at that age. And you're, they're like, all right, so we're just going to do it. And they didn't have me practice a swing. I go to throw the paint at him. That shit was, I threw the whole paint can at his back. I know you're just looking like, 
<laughs> they, everybody stopped like, oh. And he was like, I'm good. You know, he was fucking yeah, six, yeah. five. Uh, I wonder what he's up to. I, I know. What's, what's he up to? Officer, uh, Officer Walker. Officer Walker. Yeah. Officer Walker be thieving, be yo. Thieving, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, he was so mad in that seat. Yeah. Officer Walker be thieving, yo. Because, bro, I mean, that's... Hey, that's the most relatable shit. You just have a cop. Like, bro, I just got this money from Marlo. And then, and then I love the parallels of, like, how you be like, I'll take any nigga money if he giving, giving it away. away. And then they go to uh, Woodlock. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, yeah, I'll yeah. take any motherfucker money yeah. if they giving yeah, it away. away. It's like, Fire. It's like, damn. That's... Also, I, you know what I recently noticed? Uh, I recently noticed there's a lot of times where we would be, uh, not a lot of times, but there were certain shots where we never worked with Michael K. Williams, right? Yeah. But we would be walking one way, and then he'd be in the van, and he'd be seeing us through the window. Mm. And then, th- then they'd turn off, go somewhere else, and then you'd see, like, maybe it was, like, you and, and Michael walking in another direction. So it was... We didn't see, they did a good job of like us not being with the other characters, mm, but we all was in the same world. Yeah. But it's That's like, okay. Sick. Cause they would get like, okay, it was probably a shot. They're like, well, we need you to walk around this corner. We didn't ask questions. We yeah. just walked around the fucking corner. Yeah. And then they get that shot. Meanwhile, this van's going by, but we don't realize don't in that realize. van is and Michael K. Williams doing Omar. And the- yes. Oh, that's. Sick. Yeah, bro. The parallels is so insane, insane, bro. Insane, bro. So many, so many different moments where you're like, if you watch the show, you'll just realize shit you never realized in your life, and you're like, oh shit, I've watched the show like thirty times, never saw this, no, hundred percent, never saw that, never saw th- like some good TV there, man. <laughs> some damn good TV, some good TV there, it's, it's intricacies yeah. that are just unmatched, absolutely. Well, before we get out of here, we're going to be right back. I got to grab something for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. We're back. Yep. So, brother, you know, it's only right. It's only right. That you should also have. You hit me on, on Twitter about it, but yeah. come on. You know, I have to give it to you in person. Come on now. Come the on, friends. Let me, let, me, let me get that. <laughs> My dog, I appreciate you. Hell yeah, bro. The friends. This is a classic, man. Thank you, man. I don't know. I don't know what y'all. Yeah, if you don't have this, go and get this hoodie. Where can where, where, where can we find a hoodie? Oh, the bro? link is in the, the link is in the description. The description. It's it's also in my bio. The link is everywhere. This is this is soft cotton, man. What's what's this? Come on, this is, man. You know this is kind of fancy, sir. Yeah, Got to do it right for the yeah. for the wire fans, yeah. brother. Yeah, this picture. This is probably one of the most iconic pictures. Yeah, like yeah. this or the other one where with we're the just, pigeons. That's a good one oh, too. That's a classic it's just the one. the wide and the wide shot. I want to make one with that because the wide shot has all of us. All of us. It literally yeah. has you, me, yeah. Jermaine, Tristan, Nathan, uh, Nathan fucking yeah, Chaliso. Uh, Chaliso, like every yeah, yeah. everybody. Who are those other niggas that was there? I, I don't know. <laughs> I've, we've never seen them again. It was like two other niggas. But they might just, you know, just live in Baltimore. That's the extra <laughs> but, but it really that. was like two, three other niggas we'd never speak about. And they'd probably be like, yo, you know, I'm one of the corner boys in the first episode. And we'd never seen them niggas again. Well, I mean, I don't think, I, if they wanted to be known, they'd reach out. Two niggas, who are they? <laughs> Like there's niggas in the background or on the side of like, Oh, this side, yeah, you, cut got, out, you cut him off though. You cut him off. That nigga, it was just He's, just he's, like, he's a part. He's down. He's in history. Yeah, he's this a, is part a of classic history. fucking nah man. shot. You deserve. And I'm also I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure you get you know. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even peep the oh, shirt yeah, yeah. at all. Oh come on, you oh, know. Oh yeah. You gotta get the. That's crazy. The the you gonna look out for me? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, so let me just say this before we get out of here, that that is, it, you know, when I think about this the show. And we think about the fact that you never got one well, one Emmy nomination. For like casting. For casting or writing. It was yeah. screenwriters Emmy. Um if there was no moment in this show that told you this season in particular deserved something, it was that 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 scene. One Thank of the you, the most poignant scenes I think in the show's history. Thank you, bro. Acted on a high that's high level fucking acting and i hope i know i say this to you often so i know you understand it but i need you to get that my nigga 
the work you did in that scene is, I don't know if any of us had a better scene. Real Thank shit. You, bro. And the, what you did, and that was a testament to your career prior to that, all the history, all the work you do. But like that scene and the way that fucking Denzel <laughs> glory tear came out and the fucking makeup Man, and oh, yeah. the... Debbie crushed the, they... Nigga, but no, but it, it you could do all the makeup, you could do all that, but if you don't have the performance, it's worthless. But that scene with you, nigga, one of the best acted scenes in that entire show. So thank you, brother. Congratulations. That's love. Word up. And we out. Peace. Yep. Yeah.